about the size of a grapefruit at the very, very top of the page. So very, very lightly, draw a large circle the size of a grapefruit. Light and messy is the key to a successful drawing, so don't worry about it being perfect. We'll make all the darker marks later. Once you've got your circle drawn, as you can see, my circle is very messy. Put a little dot in the very, very center of your circle. And then from there, we're gonna draw a vertical line going all the way down. Divide the circle in half. Pretty easy start. Next, we're gonna divide the circle in half again, in quarters this time. Fairly easy. Now at the very bottom of the circle, we're gonna uh, draw a, another horizontal line. Doesn't make sense yet, but all this is going to work in being able to draw a really good drawing of Flynn. Next thing we need to do is measure the distance of the radius of our circle. From the center to the very, very bottom, we're gonna take this distance and shift it to the very, very bottom of the page. I'm gonna mark it, and then draw another horizontal line. So now we have three horizontal lines equally spaced apart on our paper. All right, we have three horizontal lines, we need five. So we're gonna put these next ones right in the middle. Like I said, fairly easy to set up. All the way through. Next thing is the crescent. We need to find the center of his face. That is going to be this crescent. Take it to the very, very top and slide this down towards the bottom. Our little crescent for the center of Flynn's face. All right, next thing we're gonna do is begin to square the chin. So at the very, very bottom, uh, this, uh, the bottom of our vertical line just to the left, I'm gonna draw a little square. This will all make sense in a moment. You'll see how this fits together. A little bitty square. And from that small square at the bottom, we're going to drag that line up to the crescent. Once you've got that done, uh, we can go ahead and uh, draw one of our first features already. We can set up Flynn Rider's chin. So I'm gonna begin to press a little harder and make it a little messy. Flynn, it's okay to draw Flynn with some messy lines because a lot of our lines are gonna cross over each other anyway. So there is the beginning of Flynn's chin. All right, now let's move up higher on our picture and uh, now focus on trying to get his forehead drawn. So from our first guideline, I'm gonna go out just a little bit and build Flynn Rider's brow. Let it extend from the circle, bring it right back into the crescent. Just a little bit, don't make it too dark here. The only thing that should be dark is the chin. There's a line for the brow. Now we're gonna set up the left cheek for Flynn using the edge of our circle. I'm gonna to continue to pull this down. Our goal is to get to the chin at the bottom. So we need to slowly start angling our line towards the bottom where the chin is. Don't make it too dark because we need to be able to build his nose. All right, now speaking of the nose, here we go. Uh, from the crescent side, uh, from the crescent, from the brow, let's go ahead and begin to draw a very, very light shape for Flynn Rider's nose. I'm gonna pull this over. And of course, Flynn has been uh, uh, fond of saying it, looking at all the water posters, uh, that no one seems to be able to draw his nose just right. So we are going to try to make sure to draw a nice nose for Flynn. So a very, very light line, very generic looking uh, line beginning of our nose. Once we get that just a little below, I'm gonna draw this across to get the end of the nose kind of lightly drawn in. And then I'm gonna draw a little mark for his nostril. Just underneath, sliding it back into the second square above the first square, and put the edge of the nostril here, just a little light line to mark the end of the nose. Okay, that's the beginning of our nose. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and uh, draw these marks a little darker. So here we go now, we're darkening in a little bit of Flynn Rider's brow. I'm gonna pull this in just a little bit darker. And at this point, I'm also going to begin to affix the bridge of his nose just a little bit. 
So now I'm gonna take this light shape from the nose and begin to draw the bridge. And I'll put a little bit of a dip in it as I'm darkening it. No one's nose is perfectly straight. Everyone's got a little bend of the nose and mine's very, very, got a lot of bend in my nose. So don't make yours that bendy. Bendy. All right, now I get to the end of the nose. I'm gonna define the edge of it a little bit. There's that small little bitty piece of skin between the nostrils underneath. And then now I'm gonna draw my nostril to the right. There's a little bitty hole for the nostril slot. And there's the edge of the nostril attached to his face. So there's our nose. Now let's go ahead and darken the left line behind uh, the brow that goes down to the chin. Since we know where our nose is, we can finally darken the left side of his face all the way down to the chin. Pretty cool. And see, you can let your lines be very, very messy for this. They don't have to be very, very clean. Okay, let's finish up the left eye because we're here at uh, this part of the face. The left eye is pretty easy to draw. Let's add in a dark little wedge for his eyelid. Small little bitty wedge in there. The shadow is falling across his face, so it's going to be fairly dark, and this is probably the easiest eye to draw. Then we can shape the rest of the eye, the, the white of the eye. Notice it kind of fits just inside our original circle. And then we can add in uh, the iris and pupil. Really, when you draw the iris and pupil here, uh, it, you're not going to be able to distinguish it too much. They all just kind of run together, being that close to that side of the face. All right, now let's go ahead and add his eyebrow on this left side. He's got some pretty thick brows, and so we're just gonna build this shape, and notice my lines are very, very sketchy and messy. It works very, very good to keep it messy that way, because we're gonna draw this the entire way through Flynn. And there is our uh, brow, and we got the left side of the face uh, tackled. All right, very good. Uh, the next thing now we need to work on is going to be Flynn's right eye. That one's gonna be a little trickier to draw, so I'm going to use a reference that we're gonna to help to draw the right eye. All right, here it is. This is a larger version of the eye we are going to draw that's in this space. Notice there are two crosshairs in our circle. The top one's the center of the circle, the bottom one's just below, and here they are again. Notice the distance between the one that I am showing you is a little bigger, so we're gonna draw this eye a little smaller than what you see here on the screen. Now, uh, we're gonna draw this eye backwards. First is gonna be the pupil. So we'll start with a little bitty circle, just against that crosshair to draw our pupil. It may seem odd to do this, but this is actually a, a fairly, fairly simple and easy way to tackle it. Next will be the iris. We'll draw the iris shape around the pupil. We only need the left side. Now with the iris out of the way, let's go ahead and draw the top of the eyelid. We're gonna stretch that across the top of those two marks. So it's kind of like a, a seesaw or a teeter-totter. That'd be a little thick. And then I'll break off the top end of it, way over here, just a small uh, mark. Uh, this is gonna be that little bitty inset inside of the eye between the, the bridge of the nose and the top of the eyebrow. All right, so there goes that portion of the eye. Now we need the bottom curve of the eyelid. So I'm gonna curve this around, bring it a little lower, and sweep it underneath to draw the rest of the white of our eye. Well, the bottom of the eyelid, and then the white of the eye. Then I'll curve around. All right, so now we have the eye drawn. Let's go ahead and darken in the pupil. Let's go ahead and finish the eye. I'll go ahead and darken in the top of the iris a little bit to kind of uh, suggest eye color and shadow, and it puts the eye further underneath the eyelid. All right, very good. Next thing to add, we're done with the eye. Let's keep moving to get his eyebrow drawn on this uh, right side. Flynn Ryder's been hanging around with the Stabbington brothers, so he probably hasn't had time to get his brows groomed. So we're gonna give him some nice, uh, thick brows here. Busy with a life of 
crime stealing. So there is our nice thick brows for Flynn. And notice I'm making it very, very dark on the bottom because that's where the shadow is going to fall. All right, great. Fantastic. The uh, next part is going to be the jaw. We got to figure out where we're going to draw the jawline. And the, the cool thing about the jaw, I know exactly where it's going to be. All right, here in our drawing uh, from the third guideline from the left side of the cheek and the nose to the center, that's the same distance we're going to go to the right. So I'm showing you the same distance with my fingers. This is going to be the edge of the jaw. I'm going to mark it. It's kind of a neat little coincidence that it fits this way. We'll go up just a little bit higher, closer to the circle. And then as I begin to build the shape of the jaw uh, a little lower, I'm going to connect it back to my chin at the bottom. There. Nice, thick, dark mark for the chin and the jaw. All right. Well, we got the jaw down. Let's go ahead and uh, figure out where his lips are going to go. So, first the upper lip. On our fourth guideline, we're going to give him a little bit of a smirk. So I'm going to start with the, a slight little lift of our lip, dragging it along closer to that fourth guideline, and then I'll suddenly uh, send this line a little higher, crossing over our vertical, and put a little mark for a dimple on the end. So it's a kind of a smirk. It's, it's a smile. Next, we need the lower lip. For the lower lip, really when you draw the lower lip, all you're drawing is the shadow below the lower lip. So it's gonna start off fairly dark, dark mark, and as we move across the right, it's gonna go, it's gonna get a little wider and a little lighter. So it's gonna create that illusion of a lip. I'll even draw a small mark just to indicate the edge of the lip. All right, next thing we can add to give them the beginning of a, perhaps a little bit of a smolder, we're going to add a little shadow under the nose. So right under the nose, I'll draw a little bitty line that goes just along the edge of where the nose is. And then I'll shade in that area right underneath. Put a little shadow across the nose. Now we can begin to build his ear. For the ear, we're not gonna put a whole lot of information for the ear now, we just need to know where it is. So a quick little be a couple of straight lines, quick little sketch where the ear's gonna go, and that'll be fine for now. But we need, we get the ear in place so that we can figure out where next to draw the hair. All right, so, got the ear set up, let's begin to figure out where we're gonna draw his hair. We'll draw the outline of the hair going all the way around his head. Beginning with the brow, I'm gonna build a little bit more of the forehead going a little higher in my circle. And then uh, the outline of the hair, I'm gonna pull this just a little bit away from my circle and draw a set of quick lines to suggest where the hair is going to be, the outline of the hair around his head. Going above the circle, behind the circle, I'm pretty much above my ear now. I'm gonna drag this now behind the ear, to the back of the ear, and then a little lower. And as we move a little bit lower, we're gonna give him the Okay, this is a little silly. It's a little bit of a mullet, okay? Sort of like a John Stamos look. We're gonna go ahead and uh, let the hair be a little bit wild in the back, let it be a little long. Yes, I'm keeping it a little messy, but it works out just fine for our purposes. And there's the outline of the top of the head with the hair. All right, uh, next thing is gonna be for the beginning of his bangs, the hair that hangs in front of his face, the hair that I don't really have anymore. So let's start that little bitty claw-like shape for his bangs over the forehead. So I'm gonna start my claw shape. It's fairly long. This is actually the shorter of the bangs in front of his head. And here's my little claw. Now you don't have to draw your hair exactly like mine. In fact, each time I draw it, the hair gets a little different anyway. So there is my claw shape for his bangs. We got that one done. And now we gotta draw the hair on the other side of the face. So we know the hair on this side of the face is long because uh, during the film when Rapunzel smacks him with the frying pan, she has to move that hair out of the face and then she notices just how handsome he really is. So we gotta draw this hair fairly long. So I'm gonna start over here at the very top of the forehead Expanding to the left, dragging it a little further. Now I'm going to take this all the way down to my third guideline for this uh, big chunk of hair. We're going to break this into two parts. This is the larger piece. 
that hangs down almost as uh, about the same line as our guideline number three. And there's a second piece. This is the uh, smaller chunk. It's closer to his forehead. And there, we got it in. All right, now, still looks a little strange, but there is some light hitting across at the top of his head, and we need to put the shadow underneath for the hair. So the first piece for the shadow is going to be the larger one. So here's the first shadow we'll draw for his bangs. And then underneath it, I will draw in another little shadow. And now all this will suggest the hair we need for Flynn. So as you can see, you don't have to have very, very clean lines for drawing a Flynn Rider. It can be messy and still look pretty good. All right, bangs are done. Now the hair has to drape across his face over his ear and then back behind the ear. So I'm gonna go with the center of my circle and continue the hair across his uh, head, sweeping it to the right. Going to go over the ear and underneath the ear. All right, now as we draw the hair underneath the ear, it's in shadow, so we're going to have a horrible time learning how to draw the letter W or the letter M back and forth, and then I'll shade all of this in, just under the ear. Now we have enough information uh, set up for the hair, let's go ahead and build his sideburns. All right, for the sideburns, it's a small claw shape, and you can use your circle to help you draw that little chunk of hair that goes in front of the ear. Nobody's small claw shape. All right, it's easy, now, easy enough now to add a little bitty ear detail. I'm gonna draw a little, uh, I call this a little digital eight. Uh, you can make it as messy as you want and I'll shade it in. This will suggest the interior works of the ear. There's a little line to give the back. So that looks like Flynn Wright is here. That will work for us, for our drawing. All right, now, if he ran his hands through his hair, he might have some creases through it, so we need to cover up the circle a little bit. So I'm gonna draw some lines to indicate what the hair might look like if he ran his hands through it. And I'll draw another patch right across. Probably shade in a little bit of it here. A little break in the hair as it goes behind his head. All right, so we've got the hair all drawn. It's time to go ahead and add his collar. The collar runs the same length as the jaw. So I'm gonna draw this parallel line all the way down to my vertical and draw this large rectangle. The back of our rectangle should uh, run right about the back of our ear, maybe just a little further because this is where his neck's gonna be just behind this. So here is our collar and there is rectangle. I'm putting a little crease in it because it probably has a little crease in the collar. There it is. The collar for Flynn. Uh, the collar does rest on the shoulder in the back, so I'll draw some marks to indicate where the shoulder would go, maybe even a little seam on his jacket. And at the very, very bottom, below the chin, we need to add the other collar on the other side of his face on the other side of his shoulder. Here it is, it's a small little rectangle, or diamond shape. We'll shade the whole thing in. The shadow is casting from, uh, casting this way so you really won't notice it too much, but we'll pull the shadow in. And now we have the color drawn for Flynn. The next thing to add is his beard. Let's put his little goatee in. Don't make your marks very, very dark. Just kind of fill it in. I mean, don't, it's not a full beard, it's just a little goatee at the bottom. And now the last thing we're gonna to add to our Flynn is to put in just a little hint of a smolder. Okay, we're not gonna do that little bitty pucker thing that he did the thumb, which obviously didn't work because Rapunzel didn't fall for it. But we're gonna put a bit of a shadow across his face that makes him look a little more handsome. So here we go with a little bit of our, what I call the smolder for Flynn Rider. A little small shadow shape right between the bridge of the, the top of the bridge of the nose and the eye. And I'm going to shade this little area in, keeping it fairly dark under the eyebrow. Now to the right of the eye, we can kind of see there's the beginning of laugh lines, and that will uh, bring us right back to the edge of the cheek, where our shadow from the uh, from this side of the face will fall. 
And that line is going to run all the way down to the chin. Shade all this in from that line we just drew to the edge of the jaw. And uh, that about does it, guys. And uh, don't forget to sign your name. Well, there you go, everyone. That was drawing Flynn Rider from Disney's Tangled. Do you think Flynn Rider would approve of the way you drew the nose?